Hello and a very warm welcome to Weekly Current Affairs. Today is Saturday, 19th of November and we will be taking up the miscellaneous components of this week. As you all know, this is one such series we will be taking up current affairs from Monday starting and ending with Saturday and we will be covering up those articles which have been figured out in the various newspapers in the past one week. So this week as the miscellaneous components, it is an integrated approach where we take up the article and also understand it in a holistic way in a integrated manner. So let's start with today's session. Today we are going to take up three different articles which have been figured out in various newspapers. Now the first article which we are going to take up is the rock art symbols, ek assi symbols. Nilgiri Hills mein one of a scientist has studied and then there come up a research says that the earliest human beings who have come to live in India in the Nilgiris maybe they are related somewhere with the Ice Age time period. So now in this context we need to know about the Ice Age, Nilgiris as well as the content which has been given in this article in holistic manner. The second article that we will be taking up is the forest department has introduced elephant debt audit framework. So Tamil Nadu state government has introduced this uh, audit framework. Now what is this audit framework? We need to know about that as well. Third article we will be taking up is in the Andaman Nicobars. Yes, Andaman Nicobars may ek AC 130 square kilometer forest land is now being diverted for a great Nicobar island mega project is island mega project may there are 630 species of flora and fauna which are going to get impacted now for the examination point of view we will be taking up important species that are being discussed in that project by the government itself so let's begin with the first article our first article says that rock art symbols could point to the arrival of humans at the end of the last ice age in the nilgiris says researchers see in this article we need to know about firstly rock art this is from historical point of view and arrival of the human humans at the end of the last ice age this is geography as well as nilgiris mapping point of view this is also geography so it is once it is rightly said that what that is history has to be learned geographically and what that is geography has to be learned historically so that you get a holistic understanding so in the same context let us try to deal with this article in a similar way firstly let me tell you what exactly is this article about a scientist who is studying about the rock arts in that area has identified that there are certain symbols that which are present on the Nilgiris are also resembling the same symbols in the Europe and they too also date back to similar time period though the dating is not yet concrete but it is clearly con it is clearly pointing out that the rock arts here and the Europe they are of similar time period and rock arts of the Europe are already dated it is an indication that they are way ahead or the homo sapien evolutions ki time period pe these rock arts have been drawn by those homo sapiens now in this process they have used the orchard cherry orchard cherry is nothing but the red color component which you see it on the screen see they have used the orchard cherry firstly the red color components which you are seeing it on the screen is the orchard so you need to know about this component also upsc prelims may there is high chance that the questions can be asked here so first exactly what exactly is an orchard orchard is nothing but ek iron oxide hota hai. iron oxide in that iron oxide when you add water molecules basing on this content of the water molecules it will range from the colors from black se lekar yellow tak Thik hai? yellow color se lekar black color tak so now this component which cannot be decayed and it will be intact for thousands and lakhs of years as well so this component is used in drawing those paintings now those paintings if we can date back to which time period are they we will be able to understand that people in that local area were living from that time period now for this the evidences can be of various ways one carbon dating is a mechanism the other one is the ice age you know that ice age was there since the many beginning of the times ice age a particular time period ye hota hai jahan par one third se lekar two third of the earth is completely covered by the ice it is not that every inch and bit of an ice every inch, inch and bit of the earth is covered by ice it's not like that our ice age is an indication that most of the part of the earth is under ice age so that ice will also leave some evidences when we study the evidences of the ice age as well as the evidences of this rock art if they match with the time period, we will get to know that when are the humans settled in that Nilgiri areas. So for the examination point of view, I will be telling you a small story how the evolution of human beings happened. So 
in the geography it is generally learned that the evolution and evolution of the species took place somewhere in the africa now where exactly in is Af africa it is generally understood that the evolution of the species took place in the ethiopia or somewhere in the highlands of the africa from there slowly the man started the human started to go around finding out the coastal areas and the river valleys which they have the potential to provide possible life there so slowly they came to india as well and then they identified areas of the coastal areas they moved in various ways so they understood that at what time period they have reached this nilgiris that is what the article talking about for this we need to understand the evidences of the ice as well and before this let me tell you another small story and let's try to link up the content there as well firstly it is generally understood that most of the human beings who are located or originated in africa they were confined to africa itself the movement of the species did not take for long time period you know why it is because africa is called as a dark continent now why is africa called as dark continent it is because if you see for most of the time period there is not much of information about africa only in the 16th or 17th centuries the african exploration started and if you look into the topography here the southern part of africa is a desert the central part of africa is a thick forest and the northern part of africa is a desert again the only survivable places are your ethiopian highlands and the central areas jahan pe possible life can be very much evident so these species or the homo sapiens they started to find out the best possible walkable areas and then they started to move out so that's why africa is also called as a dark continent because one outside people did not explore africa and the people living in africa they do not have exposure outside so african continent was least explored that's one point we'll come back to this content and we'll try to interlink so firstly let us try to understand the types of evidences that the ice age gives here you should have the clarity that we are discussing ice age and we'll also discuss the evidences that are given by the histor historians now these are the evidences of geography such as glacier evidences a glacier when it is formed during its movement it will leave out some evidences now what are these evidences that evidences are nothing but can be categorized into geological evidences chemical evidences and paleontological evidences geological evidences means one due to some extreme activities maybe one rock can scrap with another rock and leave some scars or a rock when it is carved or ice when it is moved it will make some big valleys like this this piece of ice while it is moving it might create or take away the con components of the rocks which are present here and leaves a scars behind and a valley might be created now in this valley there can be chemicals present there can be air within this ice can be trapped as well as there can be some fossil fuels that can be trapped here so the evidences of a glacier can be categorized into geological chemical and paleontological paleontological is nothing but fossil recorded for firstly let us see what are the geological evidences that you will get to see when an ice moves or the ice age formation time period pe so today we will get to see most of the rocks that are being scraped or carved valleys bhi ho sakta hai and formation of a peculiar type of ridges bhi ban sakta hai as well as deposition of unconsolidated material which you will not see those kind of materials in india but it have its origin somewhere else maybe the origins of the material which is found in india has its origin in the africa or else it might have its parent component in antarctica so those are some evidences which we can take forward and identify the age of that particular time similarly large rocks and erratic formations can be seen so which do not explain the natural theories of geography in this the evidences can be the second one can be your chemical see chemical evidences may mostly ice cores jo hota hai na the core of an ice it contracts and a global temperature pattern can be identified within from that core and they often contained bubbles some bubbles will also be there within this ice and when this ice melts out the gas will come out so if a scientist who can dig that glacier and understand the air composition that air is being trapped lakhs and thousands of years before so that we can date that ice ye kab movement hua tha right 
the other one is lastly paleontological evidences see paleontological evidences are nothing but fossil fuels is fossil fuel evidences may you will see that many species which are left over or a mass extinction ki time period pe carbon dating mechanism se we will can identify that these species might have been present in this era or in this time period so a popular theory which is called as the wegner's theory continental drift theory i hope everyone is aware about that in that the method of telling that the cynoganthus or the mesosaurus or the lystrosaurus all these animals are the evidences of your fossil fuels which actually comes onto your paleontological evidences so the wegner has also used similar kind of evidences now the agenda here is to understand with using these evidences the scientists have come up to say that the nilgiri mein the humans who have been living there they have been there since the later periods of the ice age now in this later time periods of the ice age evidences we have talked about along with that you also need to know the scraping mechanism or the formations of landforms within the movement of a glacier i told you when a glacier moves it also moves the rocks within that it creates an abrasion process and some scars are left over like this so when by using this scars scientists will now try to understand maybe some animals that are present within this ice they will now get exposure or maybe a air bubble which is present within this ice or an air bubble when it is exposed by making this glacier valleys if you dig some gas will be coming out so these are the evidences that are, have been used already these evidences are studied in europe and it is identified that the glacial time period can date back to later times of the pleistocene time period or the holocene time period is the one 10000 years before se pehle tab ice age hua tha right now come back and let's try to see what exactly is this article talking about see this article talks about the presence of few symbols you know what are these symbols the symbols that are found in the nilgiri hills that is idutthi area it is identified that the symbols are used are one it is circle it is cordiform dot finger fluting and quadrangle now these are the same symbols which have also been used in india and they have also used in europe so it is an indication that the movement of the species or the people might have been in the same time period this is what is the general understanding because these symbols if they are also used in india and also used in europe it is an indicative identity that maybe the species which are living in the nilgiris have also its contact with the species of the europe or maybe of the ta same time period ye bhi ho sakta hai so only time can tell when the carbon dating is done the carbon dating is not yet done but it is estimated that the carbon dating will be done in the near future and it says that once the carbon dating is done most likely they are expecting the results of the same time period if that is true it is an indication that the human beings might have settled in the nilgiris around 10000 years before so our indus valley civilization will is dating back to only 4 to 5000 years from now but nilgiri if that is true the human beings might have been living in this area since last 10000 odd years maybe what kind of species are they and all of this are an anthropological understanding but for now all we need to know is what is orchard cherry nilgiri hills and as well as the car ice age and the evidences i think this is what is the way we have to approach an individual article and if you do have any doubts regarding this you can post the comments in the comment section right and any further update on this article we'll be covering up in more detail right and come back see there is also a small understanding that generally a pot this pot is having some drawings on it this pot is having more or less plain so if i ask you which pot a person who made this pot and a person who made this pot who do you think is more civilized or who do you think is more advanced in historical saying or historical understanding is that a person who uses a better advanced technology in making those pots is the one more developed so orchard cherry is nothing but a material that material is orchard cherry here the iron oxide when you mix with water it ranges from black color to liquor yellow red multiple colors you will get now if someone is using this orchard it is an indication that they are aware of this chemical reaction so that's why they are able to make that pots 
So, a plain pot and an orchard pot, orchard pot, it is indicated that orchard cherry, whoever is making, they are little more advanced, right? So, in the similar way, you also get to see the orchard which is used. It is indication that the human beings who are living in these areas are little advanced as compared to the other areas, right? I think that is it with this article. We will be taking up our next article. Our next article talks about the elephants. See, in the elephants, it is general. Tamil Nadu state government has come up with one of an art, one of the innovative idea. They wanted to understand how the elephants are dying and they wanted to make a streamlining process, a standard protocol. So, this article says, let us read the headlines first. Forest Department introduced Elephant Death Audit Framework. Elephant Death Audit Framework. See, elephant death is nothing new. The poaching of the elephants in the last few decades have come down as compared to the earlier time period. But still, the deaths of elephants are again high, especially in the Nilgiri areas in the southern districts. So, because of that, what they have tried is, now we have to understand the cause of the deaths of the elephant. So, Tamil Nadu government has now given a notification that they wanted to go for a transparent and more improvised, standardized as well as credible monetary assessment program, how the elephants are dying. So, poaching, if poaching is not a reason, then what is the reason for its death? Now, they wanted to go and understand which age groups the elephant are dying and they wanted to make a protocol. For that, they are using some technologies. Now, what are these technologies? DNA mapping technology they wanted to make utilize and according to the framework, identifying the cause of mortality remains a critical foundation for many questions related to population and conservation ecology. Yes, that is true. Now, it says that the framework will include a transparent process, stakeholders, her stakeholder co, they are going to facilitate a standardization procedure and more credible comparisons with other states. And it is also saying that they wanted to collect high quality and credible mortality assessment data through transparent process. Now, what is this high quality and credible mortality assessment data? See, this is nothing but to in order to have these kind of data, you need to have a data called baseline data. Now, what is this baseline data? Before you start any research, research you need to have a base. How do you have to proceed that research? That is called in simple terms as the baseline data. Now, this baseline data for elephants is they wanted to utilize the data of the previous past around 40, 50 years ka data, how the animals have of elephants have been died. It is generally understood that the man animal conflict may humans ka jo death say oh come hai. Poaching ki karan sabse zada hota tha 50s to 60s me, 70s ke baad jab wildlife protection act aya tha. From then, elephant death has been reduced because of poaching, but still poaching is also also one of the reason. Now, the second one, unnatural deaths and natural deaths go vary. Kare. For that, natural deaths are the ones they age out and they die out because of some diseases or the young elephants, they fight among themselves and they die out. This is some of the natural deaths. Unnatural deaths are something, an elephant track, railway track, when it hits with the elephant or the rails, as well as buses, roadways, accidents, these will lead to the deaths also. These are called as unnatural deaths. Now, they wanted to reduce these unnatural deaths. So, all this falls into a protocol or the content which we have taken up as a project as Project Elephant. So, Project Elephant may subse advanced state jo hai, Tamil Nadu hai, because the most of the population of elephants you will see in the southern states as well as in the northeastern area. So, because of that, now they are going for enhancement of the Project Elephant. So, first let us see what is this Project Elephant. Is may Project Elephant, it is started in 1991 and 92. In this, they said that they wanted to protect the elephants. While protecting the elephants, they want to go for some technological adaptations. That technological adaptations came from the mic. What is this monitoring of illegal killing of elephants? This is a technological evolution hai and sites which is called as Con Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species. This sites is also taken and very strictly implemented any trade in the product of an elephant is a illegal, it is a crime and there is also a signatory which is called as South Asian Wildlife Enforcement Network that is SAVIND. So, many standardized procedures have been put forward for the elephant and of course, elephant is one of the famous species 
ऑफ यूपीएससी हर दो साल में कहीं ना कहीं क्वेश्चन इट विल बी आस्ड सो लेट अस क्विकली सी सम बेसिक फैक्ट्स अबाउट एलिफेंट हियर दिस इज प्योरली फ्रॉम द प्रिलिमिनरी एस्पेक्ट्स फर्स्टली लेट सी द हैबिटेट ऑफ एन एलिफेंट एलिफेंट मोस्टली लिव्स इन ग्रास लैंड फ्लड प्लेन एवरग्रीन रेन फॉरेस्ट डेसिडियस फॉरेस्ट एंड स्ट्रब लैंड एज वेल एंड एलिफेंट इज अ माइग्रेटरी स्पीशीज वंस इट स्टार्ट टू माइग्रेट इट कीप्स ऑन मूविंग फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर प्लेस मे बी इट विल स्टे इन दैट एरिया फॉर फाइव टू टेन डेज बट इट्स अजेंडा इज टू मूव एंड इट इज द पाथवे it is the pathway creator for the forest and its favorite food if you know it is mostly the grasslands like bamboo be a favorite food hai it also eats your sugarcane so mostly it moves into those areas next some important other facts such as gestation period of an elephant usually 21 months is the gestation period of an elephant it means 21 months tak it will have its baby in the stomach and after 21 months the baby will be delivered and one usually one calf is born it's not multiple calves and 4 to 5 years is the breeding interval and then 36 to 48 months is the maternal care of the offspring which is needed that means near about 4 years of maternal care of the offspring is required a baby when it is born it will be there with the mother at least till 4 to 5 years and it is required the care is required so it is just as your humans and it is one of the most intelligent species of all the species now geographical range if you see it is also called as the eastern species elephant is called as eastern species why is it called as eastern species especially in asia you will only see them on the eastern side on the western side it is called completely absent you can see the map here mostly east of india this is found west of india it is absent now why please comment in the comment section if someone knows now did you know elephants are good swimmers using their trunk as a snorkel a important tidbit fact hai though it is not much important in the terms of examination ke liye but somewhere elimination mein you can use it and the next one elephant has a great memory someone says that elephant memory see once it remember something it keeps on its memory until it's die right elephants are intelligent species they can negotiate they can communicate they can also make proper projected plans now these are some of the important aspects there are two different types of elephants one is african one is indian so that's it here for us the important aspects here is you can use this content for your mains as well as for the preliminary point of view some important tidbit facts right so always remember tamil nadu as a forest department it le- it is one step ahead as compared to other states so any learning from the peer groups Tamil Nadu forest department's activities need to be monitored you can write in your examination and take that as a conclusion or a way forwards and lastly our last article talks about the clearing of the forest lands around 8 lakh trees have to be cut off to deliver this project now what is this project it's a project which is great nicobar island mega project in that they wanted to construct various tourism industries as well as they wanted to go for ad- enhancement of the nicobar in this due process if they are cutting out this 8 lakh trees around 8.5 lakh trees as reported by the hindu newspaper as well as it also says that around 10 hectares of coral cover will have to be translocated again it's a difficult task indigenous shompen and nicobaris tribe will be affected as well as the leatherback sea turtles nicobar megapods nicobar macaque saltwater crocodiles and the rare fauna which are found in those areas are always a threat so ye jo project hai pichle hafta in principle approval it has already been given now they are going to take a survey and within a month or so there will be project started so when this project starts the biggest threat is for few species which are endangered and vulnerable and some one or two species who also have a range in their critically endangered range so a critically endangered species it has its range means it moves from moves into these areas as well so let's see what are these species and how important are they now the first species which will be impacted is nicobar shrew second one nicobar lion tailed macaque this itself is lion tailed macaque it has a long tailed and it is located in andaman nicobar third one is great nicobar crested sp- sprint eagle nicobar paradise fly catcher and nicobar megapod ye kafi important species hai let's see some important species and their ecological habits and their interactions with the environment so let's quickly see this first one geographical range of the nicobar tree shrew is it lives on the tree and it's a shrew 
So this tree shrew, when the trees are cut down near about 8 lakhs, the dislocation of this species is definitely going to happen. So the chances of these kind of components will be asked in the examination is high. So here we need to know about not just about the species status and some characteristics of the species also. That unique characters can be asked in one liner and they will trap you there. So firstly, geographical range, if you have great Nicobar areas, it will be found. And secondly, tropical evergreen forest only it is found. And one of the tropical evergreen forest, may, around 10% of the area of this project is falling into the tropical evergreen forest. And when you look into the foraging, Nicobar true shrees, jo hai, what do they do is, associated, they are associated with racket-tailed trong or sparrowhead. So, this true and the species which are present, they are associated, they live in the bonhomme. They may help them avoid predators. See, usually when the species is yet to be eaten by another animal, these species will indicate that you are under threat. So, looking at that, now the tree true will also move away from that area. Next is, it is tree shrews have high brain to body mass ratio. So, this is one such species. Inka size to chota hai hai, but the size of the brain is little larger as compared to any other species. And this is something very important. Conver conservation status agar dekha gaya, it is endangered. It falls into the endangered category. That is it regarding this species. The next species which is in use is Nicobar long-tailed macaque. So, this Nicobar, Nicobar long-tailed macaque is one of the grassland species or and it also lives in the large trees where it crab-eating animal bhi kaha jata hai. It lives on the trees. After that, it needs some peculiar food. It eats fruits and to digest those fruits, what does it has to eat? It has to eat that crab. So, this is something very, very unique to this species. Right. And when you look into the status, its status is vulnerable as of now. Now, the last species which is important is the megapod. This is a megapod. This megapod has uniqueness. One, it lives in the forest. And what does it do? When it is going into the forest, when it lays its egg, it usually lays its egg and then covers it up with the vegetation. Suppose it has laid its egg and then it covers with the vegetation and during that vegetation it gets that heat and after that new hatchlings come out. So, today the species which it is living around 8 lakh trees may most of the population is found is regarding this species and the vegetation will be gone. It is generally understood that this vulnerable species will now fall into endangered in the next 2 to 3 years. So, these are some of the important concepts which we have been figured out in the various newspaper. Though the article is on the surface, but we have to go into little more depth. If you do have any doubts regarding this topic, you can message me here. And my name is Madhusudan Reddy. See, reading alone is not sufficient. It is also very important for you to write what you know. So, for that, the seize the mains question will be based on this topics. What you can do is, you can go to the link in the description and write the answer to the topics which we have been discussing here. Thank you and take care for more related articles. We will see you in the next week.